the owner will say to you, here's how the case is always delivered. First, telling you how wonderful the dog is until we get to the but clause, as I call it. So the presentation of the history is, well, he's totally fine off leash. He's he's been absolutely trustworthy for like seven years. And, And he's really good with big dogs. And he's okay with some little dogs. But occasionally when he's on leash and there's a little dog, and especially one that yaps at him, He's, he's uncontrollable, he fights all the time, and he's trying to kill the other dog. And if I hadn't been there to pull him off, he would have killed the other dog. The, this is what the owner says. Um, obviously, this is just pure fabrication and the owner's um, emotion bubbling over and not looking at this objectively. Um, what are the raw truths about a dog? Um, it could kill another dog in a quicker time than you could grab it. That's number one. If you've ever seen, like, dogs kill rats, heaven forbid if you've ever seen a dog kill another dog. I mean, it's very ugly. It's so fast, you can't believe it. It's so fast. And, you know, they don't do these kill shots. They do. Have you ever seen the films of cape hunting dogs killing? Big game. Yes, one grabs one hop, one the other hop, one the snout and the rest eat its abdomen as it's running, grabbing the intestines and holding on to them till the animal's held back by three strands of intestines. It is, it is scary. They are very efficient killers. You think you held it back or pulled it away in time? You could never pull it away in time. In the time that you could grab a dog, he can bite you five times. Right? Quick reaction time in a human to hit a button when it comes on, two-tenths of a second. That would be the youngest guy in the room. Two-tenths of a second. In the time that guy could hit the button, the dog's bitten him five times. And more exciting, because I like comparative you know, behavior, in the time that a dog could bite, a cat's paw can hit his muzzle three times. <laughs> and after those three times, the cat's paw is still flicking at that rate. And that's what scares the dog. It's like a rattlesnake's tail. The paw is still like... <laughs> Whoa, it's amazing. You've got to film it and see it in slow motion. But you can't. Why? You only take 30 frames a second. You can't still the motion. All you see is blurry cat's paw. And a dog's eyes going, whoa, that was impressive. So you could not pull a dog away. You could not stop a dog from pulling unless you're set, okay, with a little dog, say a French bulldog, to stop that dog doing that to you and going a full eight feet away from you and getting onto that dog and causing extreme damage, you would have to be set with your legs like this, your knees bent, both hands on the leash like this. You could then stop a Rottweiler lunging if you saw it go and you did that. Otherwise, you're going over. You know, a French bulldog could take you off your feet. Okay? let alone something like a lab or a shepherd or um, you know, a Dalmatian or, or, or what have you. So, let's look at the realities. Don't joke and say, well, does your dog eat? Yeah, then he doesn't fight all the time, does he? It's not funny. These people are really, really... It's one of the few times in dog training when I don't crack jokes. I don't laugh, I don't make it funny, because the owner is so upset about this. And strangely enough, they seem to be more upset about dog-dog reactivity than when a dog nips a child or bites someone. It's amazing. Um... So the way I take the history is, I say, tell me about the dog's first fight. Almost exclusively when an old puppy and another dog attacked him. The story is always this big, bad, unsocialized dog attacked the puppy. In reality, what we had was a puppy that wasn't socialized properly. Yeah, he went to puppy class, but he didn't go to a dog park. He wasn't around older dogs. He didn't know how to show respect, so he didn't show respect. He really did the equivalent of mooning that dog. He did the equivalent of walking into a biker bar and yelling out, bikers are pussies. No, I'm being serious. That's what the little dog did. And so this dog says, what are you saying? That was the first one. Okay. Um, Second one, oh, now there was a fight with a cavalier. Third one was a Labrador. Everyone can remember the first three fights. Then I go to the last one. Second from last, third from last. Everyone can remember those. Then if I say about how many fights in between, they will give you a number. Oh, five. If you start off and ask them, how many fights has your dog had? 
they will never reply with a number. So I could say, how many yellow markers? One. This is a how many question, right? You want another how many question? How many pens? Five. How many dog fights? Oh, he fights all the time. He's trying to kill the other dog. It is really funny. You cannot get a number answer for a how many question if it's how many dog fights. So I do it the way I said. First three, last three. Now we go through each fight one by one. Okay, the first fight, um, did the other dog go to the vet clinic? No, of course he didn't. He attacked my puppy. All right. Um, did your puppy go to the vet clinic? No. Cool. Good. And the second fight with the cavalier. Did the cavalier go to the vet clinic? No. Oh, cool. Right. What about with the Labrador? Well, there's lots of blood. I said a bit in the ear, and they go, how do you know that? I was like, they think I'm clairvoyant, because I've done this so many times. Ears bleed. You know, Mark, we have Dogsbury rules, is you bite things from the neck forwards. Okay? Scruff doesn't bleed. Throat doesn't bleed. If it did, your dog would be dead. Muzzle doesn't bleed. Ears bleed a lot, and they're flapping around in the fight. They're such great things to grab hold of and go, mm, and create an immense amount of pain and get the other dog to let go. So, yeah, did you go to the vet? Mm, well, no. Then we go through every fight at a time. What we usually find is the most common fight-bite ratio is N to zero, meaning any number, N, a number of fights to zero. The greater the number of the fights, the better the prognosis. Every time a dog has a fight and there's no damage done, that's proof positive of bite inhibition. Now, I want you to think about it. Imagine now two dogs fighting. You know, <laughs> Woo! I'm sorry for the dogs in the room. Did I just spook a dog out or something? Oh, it made you drop stuff? Sorry, I won't be a fighting dog again. Um, <laughs> I mean, they're delivering so many bites per second, yet none of them punctured the skin. There were no vet. This is amazing. This makes me an absolute and complete believer in the whole concept of bite inhibition, which is a concept. That's all it is. You know, I just came up with the terms, and that's what we use. But I stake my life on it. I, I make prognosis on this to tell owners, you have no problem. Let's solve your problem today, right? Let's let them off leash.